In this video, we are going to install and configure Windows Deployment Services on Windows Server 2012 R2. First, before we begin, uh, I just want to mention that if you want to follow along, I have installed a new Windows Server 2012 R2 server and I made the C partition a little bit bigger than I usually make it. So it's uh, 65 gigabytes and this is because I'm going to store uh, the install images on C. And uh, what we are going to do in this video is install uh, WDS, configure it, import boot and install images and at the end make a test installation to see if everything is ok. And the configuration and uh, most of the steps will be either through graphical tools or through PowerShell. I'm on my WDS uh, server and uh, these are a couple of commands that we will use during this uh, video. And the first one is to install the WDS role. Let's run it. And uh, as you can see, this will install also the sub features of WDS and the management tools. Also take note that uh, this doesn't work on server core. WDS requires the graphical interface. Okay, so uh, WDS is installed. The next step is to configure it and this uh, will be done through the graphical tool. And in uh, this tool, just go to servers and you see that this server, while it has WDS on it, it requires also some configuration. So right click, configure server. This is where we can choose if we want it integrated with uh, AD or not. Since we have AD, it's better to integrate it so we can join machines to the domain. This is the folder where everything uh, that is related to WDS will be placed. For me, as I mentioned, I will uh, choose C, so I will let the default value. Now the uh, PXE response means uh, that when a client requires a PXE server, this server will respond or not. I will choose to respond to all clients. I don't have to approve a specific client. And this was the first part. Here for now, I want to uncheck this. I don't want to edit the images at this moment. Finish. And we still have two or three things to uh, go to configure it completely. So right click properties. And uh, this is the uh, part from uh, where you can uh, modify what you selected or uh, make other configurations. You see, for example, the PXC response. Also, here is the ADDS tab. Uh, here, for example, we can specify when we add a computer in the domain, it will be placed in a specific OU. And uh, I will choose an OU. Servers. Also, we can specify a default uh, naming convention for servers that will be added to the domain. And in uh, our case, I would like to have it SRV then a number. SRV1, SRV2, SRV3 and so on. To do this, just uh, leave the percent and the pound symbol. Before them write SRV and between them write a free. This means that the naming convention will contain the letters SRV and the number that can go from 1 to 999, so three uh, characters. With this done, I want to do one more thing and that is enable logging. I always like to enable logging in my WDS environments. And for the purposes of this video, this is all we have to do. But you see there are still a lot of uh, other settings you could play around with. Click OK. 
And now that we have configured WDS, we have to also add some images. And we can do this through PowerShell. By the way, in 2012 R2, we have a WDS PowerShell module, which contains a couple of commands that can help you automate some of the tasks. And one of the commands will be uh, to uh, import new images. So first we have to create an image group. This is sort of like a folder and you can see it uh, here. And in this image group, now we can place different images. And on this uh, server, I have the, the DVD mounted on D. This is where I will get my images. And uh, this is how the command looks. So the images will be stored under the uh, image group that we created. The path is this install.wim. And since the install.wim contains more than one image, we have to specify also the name or the index, if you remember. And to find out the exact name, we can run a very simple command. You can see the four images included in this install.wim and this is what you are looking for. So whichever you want to import, you can just use this name. In our case, we will import the, serv the standard server and standard server core. Let's run the first one. And the import will take, I guess, uh, one or two minutes, depending on your configuration for the server. And it's done. Let's import also the second image. This is done also. And for the image part, we still have one more image to import because these two images that we imported now are the actual operating system that will be installed on our virtual machines. But in order to install that operating system, we need a uh, pre-execution environment like the Windows installation DVD. This is done through something called a boot image. So uh, we boot into this image from the network like we would boot from a DVD. Then this image lays out on our hard drive one of the install images that we select. So let's import also this one. imported and here's how they look in the interface the boot images here and the install images are here but we have to close and open again the uh, and actually let's uh, pin it to start And now if we go again to install images to WS, we see the two images that we imported. So everything now should be ready for us to test an installation. I'm on my Hyper-V server. So let's create a new machine. And for the name, I'm going to give it the name WSAS01 because I want to also install WSAS. And this is a spoiler for my next uh, video. Generation 2, like always, you know the drill if you follow the series from the beginning. The WSAS, let's make it 60 gigabytes. And now we don't use an ISO anymore, we can use directly uh, the network installation option. Let's finish the configuration. For WSAS, I recommend that you put a little more RAM than we usually put for virtual machines. Also, don't forget to CPUs. Integration services. 
here nothing and here shut down let's start the machine up and you see now it's booting from the network it found the WDS server let's press enter and now it's loading our boot image the one that we uh, imported uh, last here we go let's click on next now we have to authenticate to the domain so we can access the folder where all the images are stored let's click ok and you see our two images uh, for WSAS I will choose uh, server standard not core click next uh, this is the only hard drive so next and now uh, the installation should uh, begin and it has and this is exactly like if I were installing it from the DVD after it's done I will show you the result and this is what you get after the installation is done it's a little different than when you install it from the DVD directly press next accept and uh, now we have to enter the local administrator password like uh, normal And I'm curious to see if uh, you see here in the logo on screen test corp appears which means that it also added it to the domain. Let's uh, try. Yep, so everything worked exactly as uh, we planned it. The only difference is that uh, every time you install a server now it will have the naming convention that we set which for me it will not work because I have to rename the servers but it's not a big deal I will rename this one wsos01 and uh, that's it if you like the video I would appreciate a like and uh, a share Please consider subscribing if you're not subscribed to see more and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.